Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how I'd approach army painting a Grey Knight's army for Whammer 40k. I hadn't planned on doing this video, but we've had a ton of questions about how we'd approach doing it. Um, so I thought what I'd do is hit all the sort of key points I think there are when you're painting the Grey Knights, you know, things like the armor and the purity seals and stuff. So I went out and grabbed that new Castell and Crow model, um, chopped him up a little bit to make him an, a normal Grey Knight, as it were. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to apply this to all the models in your army. Now let's paint. The really key part of the model is going to be the armour colour for these guys. And I really like that they have that slightly blue silver look to them. So what I've done is taken what's already quite a dark blue silver paint anyway, scale 75 black metal. And I've added in a drop of blue ink. Now in this case it was scale 75 intense blue but any artist acrylic ink is absolutely fine. The ratio I've used is five drops of the black metal to one drop of the ink. You can see as this is going on it's just giving it a bit of a, a tint. Um, blue ink is, is really, I mean all ink is strong but blue ink really does sort of overpower whatever you stick it in. So I suggest having a little play around. And then I've thinned that with airbrush thinner uh, in my airbrush and I'm firing it through at 25 psi so we've got a nice base coat. And then one of the big things I think about making metals look nice is having a really nice high degree of contrast between our dark areas and our light areas. So I'm going to move straight to our highlight now. I'm going to use a very very bright silver and we're just going to do the same as when we highlight all our other marine models. So we'll pick a light source from the front and for this Rather than using an ink and adding it into a, a light silver, which would just give us much too much of a blue colour, I've taken an already blue metallic paint, in this case Cobalt Alchemy by Scale 75 again, and I've added this into a very bright silver Vallejo Model Air Steel. So again, it just gives it that slight blue tint, uh, and we'll, we'll carry that through the model. I want to try and keep the highlights quite tight, so therefore I'm bringing my brush in quite close to the model. Remember when that happens it's important we've got good brush control. So if we're using thin paint like we are here, and again I thin that mixture at least two parts thinner to the mixture, and the mixture was one to one in this case of the metallic blue and the silver. There you can see it dried off. It's always going to be tricky, I mentioned this in the Iron Warriors video, it's always tricky filming and photographing metal, that metal schemes, because the, the light just goes everywhere. But if bit I'm pointing at there on the shoulder pad, I just want to go and reinforce a few of the shadows. So what I've done is taken our original mix, so that was the black metal with the blue ink in, and I've added a little bit of black paint. So you can always, if you want to darken your silvers, you can always just add black into them and you'll get a darker silver. So I've added a little black in there, and now I'm going in with my brush, and I'm just glazing in, so I'm using a thin mixture of paint. It's quite hard to glaze with metallics um, because they're never properly translucent. Um, but I've got a fairly thin mixture of the paint, not too much on my brush. I'm just going to look around the areas that I want to make sure are really dark. So the side of his head there, because that's facing right away from where we're saying our light's coming from, so in front of him to the left uh, as he was looking at it. And then things like the vertical part of the... Um, the neck guard, completely forgotten the name of that thing now. Um, you know, the, the the top of that will be bright, but the vertical part of it's going to have a bit more shadowing. So we'll have a look around him again. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. A tip I always suggest when you're painting metallic schemes, um, especially if you're going to work under a painting lamp, is turn the lamp off now and again, just look at him under the room lights. You'll, you'll see the, the contrast uh, a lot easier. So I've given the model a couple of coats of gloss varnish, and this is so we can do a bit of pin washing. Use whatever gloss varnish you like. Um, I'm still using polyurethane gloss by Vallejo because I've got a massive bottle of it. I wanted to get a bit of definition into the armour here, and I tried a few different mixes. I tried a, a blue oil on its own. I tried a blue oil mixed with a black oil, and it was just it was too much for me. It, 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 the, the blue became a bit gimmicky. For, for my taste. Um, so I went to a, an enamel wash here and this is a, a panel liner for blue and grey camo. So it's, a, it's effectively it's a very dark grey colour. I really like the effect enamel washes give you um, and I wanted to paint this grey knight a bit more like how you know I, I think of them in the art and stuff. A little bit more I, I guess grimdark. Um, 
just a bit dirtier really and I like the effect that enamels washes give you with that. So this is the enamel wash once it's dry and you can see we've got that much better definition, much better separation now between those armour panels. Now, I'm really really pleased with how this silver's come out, I really hope it shows up on the, uh, on the camera. Now I want to go in and paint the gold parts. So I blacked everything else out while I was waiting for that enamel wash to dry. So it's maybe been an hour since I did the pin wash and then I popped a, a hairdryer on it. So for the gold parts, I've taken a very, very dark, uh, this colour is called Blackened Bronze uh, by Dark Star. But effectively a very, very dark sort of gold, brass and bronze colour. I really like the Dark Star metallics. You're going to see me using more of them, uh, I imagine. They've very got a very high flake. They're very... um metallic really very shiny um, and I really like that. This model in particular has a lot of details on it so I want to try and keep the colours fairly limited because um, that's my preference um, when painting the model. So I've been around all the gold parts in that black and bronze and now I'm going to give them one quick highlight and just like the silver I'm going to pick a highlight that is much much brighter than our shade colour. So it was black metal and steel. For this case, it's black and bronze, and this is antique gold, just a bright gold colour. I've gone through and, and picked the colours for this that I think will work well together. And obviously, blue is a, a heavy sort of theme with this model. Um, so I've tried to go through my, my metals and look, okay, does that look nice next to the blue silver? Yeah, okay, let's give that a go. But this would apply to any. You know, any gold you want to paint, any silver you want to paint. It's just that nice big, big jump between the dark and the bright. So I think the other last sort of part we want to do with our silver to, to reinforce what I was saying there about sort of dark and light. So I'm just going to go in with the Model Air Steel, just do a little bit of edge highlighting. Just all the really the, the top edges as it were, so the edges that are facing upwards, catch that light the most. And we can use this same paint that we use with the airbrush to highlight with the brush to highlight because it's going to be slightly more opaque when we brush it on anyway. It's so key when, when the model's all this metal, you can get a bit snowblind looking at it. That separation and that definition is so important. And we can achieve that without just slopping a wash all over it, which is going to kill that, kill that metallic which we don't want. I really like how his legs come out actually. Um, now to tie all of that finish together, I'm just going to give the model a coat of satin varnish. I haven't decided on the final finish of the model at this point, but I know satin will at least retain quite a lot of that shine from the, the metals. And what it will do is it will mean that the wash that we used in the recesses is now the same finish as the rest of the armour. So the other major part I think of the, the Grey Knight models is the amount of purity seals you've got on them. Um, so rather than going for a bright red purity seal, uh, I've gone for sort of purpley blue um, on the wax. And for this, I've chosen uh, Games Workshop Barrack Barrack Nar Burgundy. And to highlight that, I've just added a little bit of the layer model color, pale blue, into it to create a sort of lighter purple. Again, the blue. I'm going to have to add a little bit of red to the model later anyway. Um, so I didn't want that to overpower it. And then for the paper parts of the purity seals, I'm going to use a Games Workshop Rackarth Flesh. Thin this down. When you're working with the lighter colours, um, you, you sometimes can get quite a grainy texture with them uh, if you apply them too thick. So it's important to thin them down, apply them in a few layers. And then for the text, all I've done is taken my preferred black paint, so Vallejo Model Colour Black. I've added a little bit of medium to it, in this case glaze medium, but you could use drying retard, you could use lamium medium, whatever, just something that will give you a little bit longer working time. A brush with a good point, and then we're just going to tap, 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 all the way around. And this guy's got a lot of them, and he's got his books and everything as well, and his scrolls. So just chill out and, and sort of take your time and work your way around. Then once that's dry, I'm going to grab an enamel, another enamel wash. Uh, this case it's sort of a... Um, a light brown colour. Uh, it's a panel liner for sand and desert camo. We're just going to wash this all over the scrolls and the books, any, any of the, um, the parchment really. 
We don't need to use any varnishes before it. As long as the acrylic paint's dry underneath, you're not going to get any reactions between the paints. Now I've used the enamel washes here, both in this part and earlier when I was pin washing, straight out of the bottle. Um, when you do that, just make sure you shake them periodically because the pigments will settle to the bottom. One of the last parts of the metallics I wanted to do on the model was the bits that aren't his armour. So things like the chains, um, the bolter, that sort of thing, the backpack power unit bits, the exhaust and stuff. I want to paint them a different silver. Um, so I've just used Games Workshop Iron Warriors. I really like this as a sort of proper basic sort of iron silver colour. Uh, and I think what this will do is give us a bit of variation on the model, but also just reinforce the colour of that armour. It's not silver, it's this blue silver. Now for his eyes, I've used this exact same recipe for his sword, um, but for his eyes, I've base coated them using Vallejo model color Dark Sea Blue, again sticking to blues. The first highlight I'm going to use is Games Workshop Sotek Green, so a turquoise, and I'm focusing that highlight towards the middle of his face, in the middle, uh, the sort of center of the face, not the middle of his eyes, you know what I mean. And then for the highlight, I'm going to use uh, a lighter blue, this kind P3 Exile Blue. A few of you have said you've had trouble getting hold of this. Um, Games Workshop Baharoth Blue is very similar and, you, you know, would work absolutely fine. And for this, I'm just adding the same area that I did the Sotek Green, but a slightly smaller area. And then we just pop a little white highlight in the corner of his eye when we're done. So this little white dot should be surrounded by either the black or the very dark blue. Now I think that's where quite a lot of people would probably be happy to leave it. Um, I know there's a bit of, you know, or do weather grey nights, you do all this, that and the other. Um, so I'll show you him now before I do any weathering to him. Um, you'll notice I've added a few other details on there. I've been very, very simple. The red is corn red. The white stripe that you see is the pale blue that we used earlier. Uh, the leather I used Rhinox Hide, lightened it with pale blue. That's all we've done. Couple of oils, ignore the middle one. I've chosen black and a dark brown. I didn't want to use the middle one because it was too orange. It was going to stand out too much. So I want a black and a dark brown. I find with, I'm working with silvers, that I, I, it's better to go darker with the oil colors. And again, I think what it just gives you is is more definition, more contrast. And I'm just going to take my time now and just work all the way around the model, washing it over, you know, creating a wash. So I use a, a mineral spirit. I use Windsor and Newton Sansador as my thinner here. And I'll just create little mixes of the brown and the black, add the thinner in. And I can use thicker mixes of that where I want to build up a dirt and I can just use thin mixes of it like a wash where I want it to go into the panels. So I'll cover all the black parts on the model in this. I haven't highlighted the, the black is literally just model color black. So keeping it nice and simple. And there he is done. Now I'll link the uh, tutorial for the sword. We've done that in the past uh, rather than adding it in and making this video any longer than it needs to be. Uh, for the basing, I'll pop down the pigments that I've used as well. But again, it's that usual basing uh, technique that we use on most of our videos on YouTube and I'll link that up there too as well. I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at the key parts of how we paint the Grey Knights model. Um, it's always nice when you guys leave comments sort of, of models you'd like to see. As I said I wasn't planning on this Grey Knight at all um, but if there's bits that you think you'd find useful let us know and we'll always try and slot them in uh, where we can. I absolutely adore Grey Knights. Um, they were my way back into the hobby. Um, when I came back in um, so it's been really nice you know I'm not planning an army of them or anything like that but it was really nice to take this brilliant new crow model um, muck around with him a tiny bit uh, and at least just have a, a little grey knight sat on the shelf um, reminding me that I need to paint up that inquisition uh, kill team and let me know in the comments if you're working on a project or planning a project at the moment that you'd like to see an army painting video for and we'll see what we can do so thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time.